You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. All right, good morning, everybody. It's Monday morning. If you don't like the weather in Panama City, just wait a day or so, and it'll turn out nice. Or it'll turn out ugly. It really doesn't matter. But that's how things happen in the weather in Panama City, Florida. Not like Mark Charlo, who lives in La Junta, Colorado, who calls us every Friday. And they can have they have swings up there. It'll be 80, 80 degrees one day, and <clears throat> that night it'll drop down to minus 10. Yeah, I know. It's pretty. And he was telling me about the fuels that they have for winter blend is still in vehicles cars and so when the weather warms up uh the cars don't run very very well gas mileage is poor have problems with them starting and running and, and it's because they still have the winter blend fuel in there and then of course when the weather does when they change it to the summer blend from the winter from the winter blend and then the temperatures change again it's the other way around but they do that is one of the things that we don't have that kind of problem here in panama city yes we do get some days that may get down to a freezing or a frost or whatever but we're not talking about the drastic swings of 80 degrees in the daytime and dropping down to minus temperatures at night well at least they seem like they're minus temperatures to us at night when they drop below 50 degrees in panama city florida everybody breaks out their heaters or electric well, yeah, blankets mark says and, they have absolutely have 50 to 70 degree temperature swings. that's what i'm talking about we don't have those 50 to 70 degree temperature swings think about that every time you lose 10 pounds of air 10 pounds uh 10 pounds 10 degrees difference you're losing a pound of air in your tires speaking about that i noticed this morning your motorcycle tires low which one the back one or the front the one? The front one. Ooh, yeah, okay. we have a nice little thing, and all the motorcycle riders out there need to stop by and buy these. They're little cap alerts. Mm -hmm. They're color indicators of your tire pressure, and I'm going to tell you right now, how do you know if a motorcycle tire is flat? Well, the way you're really going to know is actually test it. You know, well, or kick how many it people and, actually do that well, they don't. they go out on a They ride. really don't. And, that's when, and this is kind of like a poor man's tire pressure monitoring system. And I recommend these on people's cars. And it works cars. on older cars Yes, as well. that's exactly what. And they, we have them from 32 pounds all the way up to 60 to 80 to 100 pounds. It depends on what your car, like if you have a light duty truck tire, you're carrying 80 pounds of air in your tires, light duty truck tires. Uh, that's what you got in the back, and you got 65 in the front. So we know on those auto model cars and trucks, we give we make sure we put the right ones on there. And when it, the tire pressure is right, it, the color is green, which is, makes good sense. Means go green is good. And then if the pressure drops, I think if it's four to six pounds, four to eight pounds lower, am I correct on that? Yeah, and then you have a little yellow. Band. Little yellow. And that's what you've got going on. You got, got a little a yellow, yellow, band. yellow band. Well, I'm glad I don't have the red band, which right, means like I had. Oh, which is 10 pounds low. Yeah, you had a red band on yours, and we couldn't. You kept said going, "Well, I really don't know where my leak is." And then I said, "Well, let me take a look." And I sprayed some soap on your tire, and right in the very middle of your tire, you got a little pinhole. And on a yeah, motorcycle, how convenient was it that I parked it so you could get to it? It was. It was very convenient. All we had to do was realize that we had a hole in the tire, and you don't patch motorcycle tires or plug motorcycle tires. You throw them away and buy new ones. And those were almost new. They had yeah, less than two thousand miles I on. I know. Well, that's how you know motorcycles are. Well, they're kind of like, you know, it's, they're a fun hobby, you know, but you don't, we don't race them. I mean, you may put, uh, I don't know, you may put 500 to 1,000 miles a year on riding to see your parents' back house, which is like a mile down the street from our house. But that's about all the driving we do. But, but speaking of tires, you, people really do need to check their tires when we're having temperature swings. If you have, because that's why, that's why all cars from 2008 to present are required to have tire pressure monitoring system. Not all cars had that. Now, it started back in the 90s. Our Corvettes came up with it uh, to let them know the size of the tire. If you had a tire low, I think they had, a, and it was called an indirect system, which it measured the a diameter of the tire. If it had low air pressure, the diameter tire wouldn't be quite as big. So that, that wheel would turn a little faster than the other wheels. So if it noticed that, it would say, hey, guess what? You've got a low tire. It wouldn't tell you which tire it was, but it at least told you you had a low tire. Well, the same thing, we've done it, that's an indirect system. So now they've gone to what's called a direct system, where you have a transmitter in each wheel, including your spare tire on some Toyotas. Not all cars, but not all Toyotas either. But some cars, even uh, Nissans, have a tire pressure monitoring system in the spare tire. Like I said, not all of them do. And I've had a lot of people come in, they say, well, I checked all my tires, my tire pressure light is on. But my tires are fine. I've checked them three, four times, and I go, "Would you check your spare?" And I go, "Huh? 
It's your spare tire. Why would I want to check that? Well, because it has a transmitter in there and it sends the same information to the little receiver up there under the dash and it says I'm low or I'm full or whatever it may be and it lets, keeps the light on or keeps the light off. So that's why it's so very, very important when we do have temperature swings that you do maintain your pressure of your tires because for every 10 degrees you lost, lose a pound of air. Now, some people say, well, what about the nitrogen that you can put in tires? Well, believe it or not, 78% of the air that you're putting in your tires as you go at a regular uh, service station or garage is nitrogen, 78%. And there's 21% oxygen. That's all you got in there. And so when you're buying these uh, tires that have little green cap craps on it, little green caps on them they always say hey you know uh, make sure that you uh, put nitrogen back in them well you're what you're doing is getting drier air you're getting air that's had the oxygen removed from it along with the moisture and the only thing in there is ox is nitrogen and to me and to a lot of people it's just a waste of money so don't bother doing it just check your air and tires more often i got ron online one of you got a question about spark plugs ron what kind of question you got about spark plugs well so, some of them recommend, you know, using anti-seize on spark plugs, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering about lug bolts, you know, as well. You know, well, what do you recommend? Well, I looked I, it up, and yeah. it, it just, you know, about half of them say one thing, about half say the other. I was wondering what your opinion Well, we was. talked about that last week. You're not, lug nuts have a torque. Uh, you know, everything has a torque, believe it or not. Everything has a torque on a car. And uh, it, they'll tell you whether they should have anti-seize on them or have thread sealer on them or should be dry. I want to tell you, lug nuts are towed when we're at the factory. They say they should be dry. That, that's the way the torque is. If you lubricate the lug nuts with anti-seize, that's what you're doing. You're actually lubricating them. You will over torque the wheels. So, you know, I know a lot of people up north do it because, or even people that take their trucks and put them in salt water with trailers. I don't recommend putting the anti-seize on there because what ends up happening is your tires aren't as tight as they should be because they can't get the friction, the torque, because most torque is between 85 to 150 foot pounds on lug nuts. And if you put anti-seize on there, you're not getting a true torque. Now, does that answer your question or did I go overboard on it or on that one? When I looked it up, you know, part of them say, you know, one thing, part the other. So, you know, I was just wondering what your opinion Well, the, on the opinion of automotive engineers, I have marked the calls every Friday. We've talked about this. He says you really shouldn't put anise on it, but if you don't want your lug nuts to freeze up. He said, I said, correct. So what I recommend is, we talked about this, torque them down dry like you're supposed to and go buy yourself a clear penetrating grease that that uh, skims over it goes on like water but in about 30 45 seconds it gets sticky gets tacky and it won't wash off with just regular water i've done that for years on trailers that go in salt water and engines that go in salt water and the bolts come right out and that's because they're encapsulated with this uh penetrating grease that won't allow salt water to get down there and cause corrosion it keeps the oxygen away from it so that's what i would recommend if you're trying to keep your wheels from uh, seizing up on you, where they get corroded is torque them down dry and then cover the outside of them with, with clear penetrating grease that keeps moisture from getting to them and having them seize up. That's what I would recommend there, Don, Ron. Okay, thank you very, you're very much. very, very welcome. I'm glad that. you called. That was a good question right there. But uh, if you got a car question, just call 850-763-0555. I know it's early in the morning and you're sitting there going, man, why does anyone want to get up early in the morning and talk about cars or even politics? Well, I like talking about cars. I like talking about politics. I just like talking. Maybe that's what the problem is. But I, on my hobbies, I have, um, I got... Um, interviewed last week i think it was last week for undercar digest now you will not you won't y'all won't read undercar digest unless you're an auto parts auto parts an auto repair store uh, auto a repair shop because that's who they uh, that's who their readers are they're people that own shops and they're asking about my business and what i do how long i've been in business uh what we how, how, how we operate our business but at the very end they said uh what other hobbies do you have and I said, well, I ran for office, didn't get elected. I'm involved with the state Libertarian Party as a state treasurer. And I said, I'm a beekeeper. And I, they said, beekeeper? I said, yes, I think it's very, very important that we, you know, that we have bees out there because they're the one-third of the food that's on your plate comes from bees. If we don't have bees, you're not going to have one-third of the food that's on your plate. It's really big business out there as far as making sure you have food to eat. But 
What I like to do is I like to raise bees. Uh, that's, I mean, honey gets, yes, there is honey there. Yes, you have all kinds of honey that comes in. You got wildflower, tupelo, and all this. But I just really enjoy growing bees. That's the fun to me is making, is, is taking something and making, you know, where you got a queen and a, a frame of brood, covered brood, and next thing you know, you got a full box. Just watching how that works. It's pretty amazing how God puts all this together and makes, especially this time of year. If you want to be a beekeeper, this is the time of year to do it because you can't hardly do anything wrong. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Bees will will grow no matter how inept of a beekeeper you may be. And I can speak from experience of being an inept beekeeper because I've been going going on my fourth year of doing this. And it, I tell you what, it was um, first year or two was really rough. I think I killed more bees than I actually raised. Uh, but it's uh, you know, as someone told me, the biggest uh, biggest per biggest thing that hurts bees is man and the beekeeper. Yeah, we the beekeeper. We've done a lot of things over the years that we thought were right that weren't correct. What I'm talking about is like, um, you know, we, how we were supposed to take care of our bees by, you know, treating them for varroa mite. That's a little insect, and it's not, it's an, it's kin to the spider family. It's a mite. It's got little eight legs on it, teeny tiny little thing. It would be equivalent to a five pound insect on you, according to the size of the bee, is what they carry around on them. But these little varroa mites will. Uh, bore through the exoskeleton of the bee, allowing them to be um, receptive to viruses. And viruses, that weakens the hive. When you get uh, the varroa mites help weaken it, the hive, because they bore into it, sucking the hemolith, or the blood from the bees. They don't really have blood. It's called hemolith. And uh, it sucks, um, and sucks it out of them. And at the same time, the, the opening, you know, because you've uh, compromised the exterior of it, it allows viruses and diseases to get to the bees. And that's the thing that as a beekeeper, we, what we've been taught in the past isn't always true. We were taught, told to put poisons in our hive to take care of the mites. And we said, okay, that's great. Well, unfortunately, the poisons didn't hurt the bees and they, you know, the mites developed resistance to them because there were poisons. And what ended up happening was we ended up having hives that we thought we were taking care of and we weren't and we were putting poisons in there. So the developing bees had parts per billion of these poisons and like I said, that is what the problem was. We were actually letting the developing bees have poisons. There were, you know, even minute trace amounts of them, parts per billion, would cause problems in, you know, se se sequential generations that were coming along. Remember, bees only live four to six weeks. And now during the summertime, you'll have three, four, five, six generations. In the south, yeah. In the south, in the south. That's right. Up north, especially in the wintertime, they can live six months uh, because they're not active. They're just sitting there in a big cluster of ball inside a beehive, just rubbing their wings together to keep the hive at a certain temperature. And they don't expend as much energy, and they'll, they'll live a lot longer. But once they start flying, four to six weeks, that's about all you're going to, that's about how long a bee will work before he works them, before she works herself to death. That's right, all the bees that sting you out there are female. That's right, all the hardest workers out there are female. The ones out there that don't sting you are male. They don't do anything other than just kind of lay around and wait for a virgin queen to fly by where they can try to get lucky with her. And if they're lucky, that's, that's their dream. But that doesn't always happen. And then when the first frost rolls in around October or so, we'll walk out to your beehives and you'll see a thousand dead bees out there because all the female queens have pushed all the male queens male queens, all the male drones outside the hive to die. Uh, you don't want to be a bee. It's not a very nice way to live sometimes. Uh, be, be a human being, we're much more compassionate than the bees are. Hey, if you got a car question, want to be a part of the show, give us a call at 850-763-0555. Scott Hobbs normally calls on Monday, but I believe we've got another one, of, another person is calling this morning and uh, from for Scott Hobbs. And uh, who is calling this morning, Anna-Marie? Did we check? Tell, I thought I, it was Kevin. I think it's who you told me it was. We'll find out in just a minute. This James Morse will be right back. James Auto Center. We fix it right. 